right and, and prevail. He said, Michael for his voice. But when he got ready to worship, he used Lucifer. Lucifer was in charge of the choir. And after Lucifer messed up, he knocked Lucifer out of heaven. But a third of heaven, he gave Lucifer's job to us. That's why every time you worship, you make the devil pay. Because you remind him of the job he must have. He, he, he is the devil. But then he come with deceit. Because the Bible said, and he said unto the woman. He said unto the woman. He didn't talk to the man. He said unto the woman. If you're going to launch an attack, you always target the weaker vessel. First Peter 3 and 7. So likewise, ye husbands, dwell with the wife according to honor, given honor unto her as unto the weaker vessel, that your abs together, that your prayer be not hindered. He came to the woman. It's quite as it is kept. There's a difference in the makeup between men and women. Man make decisions based upon reasons what he sees. Woman make decisions based upon emotions, how she feels. Whatever y'all sit over there like that, it take me a while to explain what I'm trying to say. Man make decisions based upon what he sees. Woman make decisions based upon how she feels. Uh, man, he get ready to buy a suit of clothes. He called ahead in the store and called the store where he's going to shop. Do you have a suit size 46 brown? They said yes. He walked in 10 minutes, got his suit and gone. <laughs> Women go shopping without money. <laughs> they walk in a store. And they go from store to store. And rack to rack. And found every suit they got. And they got a quarter in And they call it witch. And they got to try it on because they got a fit in. Talk to me somebody. Oh, that's, that's not love. A man get ready to kiss his wife. He kisses her with his eyes open. He won't see what he's doing. But when a woman get ready to kiss, before he get to her, she closes his eyes. Because she wanna feel. He wanted to get real close. He had other things in mind. She said, no, honey, you don't understand the emotional feeling of a woman. I just want you to hold me. He said, all right. So he held her all night. The next morning he got up, he carried her shopping. Help yourself, baby. Get your couple of suits of clothes. Get your two pair of shoes. Get your purse. Pass the jewelry, come and say, get you a diamond, a carrot diamond. She said, oh honey, I thank you so much for that. Then she said, okay now, let's go to the counter and pay for it. He said, pay for it. So no, no, honey, you don't understand the financial emotion of a man. So we ain't going to pay for that. I just want you to hold it. Oh, God. 
God give man 12,000 words a day to eat and nurse. He give woman 25,000 words a day to use. Uh, come on. Ask a man about his wedding. He said, we're happy. <laughs> Ask a woman about the wedding. She tell you, what's your goal? The time of the wedding. Who all was at night? The one that showed up that went at night. She go in the details. Satan also knows that that's a difference in the makeup between men and women. So instead of Satan attacking Eve with her emotions, he attacked Eve with her reason. And he attacked Adam with his emotions. In other words, he switched. Talk to me sometimes. If you get a person out of their comfort zone, you can have them much better. Talk to me somebody. I've got a catfish on at my house. I raise some old catfish and, and I bring every two years I let them come stock it and they don't stock with little bitty catfish. I let them bring the catfish three, four pounds so I can go back and catch them the next day in my morning. And lay the catfish out on the bank and they look like they have as look like they dumb as they can be. They ain't got no sense. But when you pick them up and put them in the water, a different atmosphere take place. If you take a person out of that comfort zone, you can win them every time. You dare with Eve, with her emotions, with her reasons and atoms, with his emotions. Watch what the devil said. The first thing the devil did was, he plants a doubt. Did God say you cannot eat of every tree in the garden? He plants a doubt. If anybody know the scripture, the devil knows it. <laughs> now, first thing, Eve should have answered it. She should have said, Listen, let me go get my husband. Because every evening, my husband and God have a fruit cocktail together. <laughs> Just so won't mess up. Let me, let, me, let me get him. And so my husband can answer that for you or not. He tried to answer. She could have said, wait a minute, devil. Let me get my Bible. He said, well, no Bible that day. Yes, it was. So preacher, you mean to tell me that God of Eden there was a Bible? Yes, a Bible was that there. What you mean? What is the Bible? It's the Word of God. It wasn't but two verses, but it was still a Bible. Talk to me somebody. Now, the devil says that God said you shall not eat the very tree in the midst of the garden. Watch Eve. Eve answered, the Lord said, you can eat of every tree in the garden. Don't sound like nothing wrong. But that's not what God said. In Genesis 2.16, God said, every tree in the garden you may freely eat. Here's what Eve did. She left off the word every. The devil always trying to get you to look at God's prohibition and overlook God's permission. In other words, the devil had you looking at what God said you can't have. Reach where we're at. Instead of you looking at what you can have. Oh, you'd be surprised to know how many people, and I know they don't belong to this church, but in the city of Natchez, that when they come to church on Sunday, they can't help but look at the 10% they owe God. Oh, how come I gotta give God 10%? God know my heart. Instead of looking at the 90% that God lets you give. I pretty always think you get hung up on the dime you owe God instead of taking the 90% because 
with God plus greater sin will go further than 